Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to discuss how these work holding devices, known as our chucks, three jaw chuck, four jaw chuck, attached to either work holding mechanisms or the actual machine. Basically what we want to do is we're going to grab our chuck. I've wiped off the threaded spindle. You can see it's got a big thread. I'm going to wipe off the inside of the chuck itself. What we do is we're going to start this and thread it on. You can see it just spins on. And when it's attached to the machine, it's a little bit firmer, but I'll just spin it on until it stops turning. We can use a crescent wrench to snug it down, but I prefer not to. We can do that, and many times these chucks, if they're on for a long, long time, they are very, very difficult to get off. That is one method of attaching our work holding device, known as our three-jaw chuck, to an indexing head or another type of work holding device. So it's a threaded, threaded spindle. We don't have any of these on any of our equipment. We only have it on attachments that mount to the equipment to do different processes, procedures, and, and functions. What we're going to do is we're going to discuss how these work holding devices, our three-jaw, four-jaw chuck, attaches to the, the spindle of our machine. It's a metal lathe. This particular machine is a 17-inch by uh, 40, is this what they call it, but we'll discuss the sizing of the machine in the future videos. I don't have my safety glasses on out here in the machine for discussion purposes. Normally, we will always have our safety glasses on and our proper work uh, attire within the shop. This particular one that we're going to start with, we've already discussed the threaded spindle. This one here is our cam lock, our D16 as we predominantly know it. If you notice, we have holes in the face of our spindle nose. There's also, we're going to utilize our chuck wrench, uh, very similar to what we open and close our chuck jaws with. And what they will do, they'll attach here. We will rotate them in a clockwise motion. That is how we're going to attach our chuck to the machine. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure we wipe the spindle nose off to where it's totally clean. If you have to, I will allow you to blow air to blow all the chips out, but it's only after you've wiped everything off, as well as the back of our chuck. Now, we need to protect our machine because these chucks are heavy, and we don't want us dropping or resting our chucks on what they call the bedways of this machine. So what I recommend using is just a piece of wood, nothing special about it. We've got several different uh, pieces of wood around here. I'm going to lay it on our bedways of our machine, and it gives me a resting spot for my chuck. Now keep in mind, these chucks are heavy. If you need to get help, please get help. Get uh, myself or the lab aide to assist you in picking them up um, to put them on the machine. We don't want to smash our hands or have any type of accidents. So I'm going to tip this chuck up so we can see the back of it. You'll notice a number of pins on here, the cams as they call them, match the number of holes on our machine. I'm going to make sure it's totally clean, free of chips, wipe all of it off. Now, our chuck that we have here, and it's very important to understand, is we have a line on it right here, and there's also a line on our spindle. What that does for us is it lets us know or identify which one of these pins go in which one of these holes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up my line my line on my spindle is actually stamped on the spindle here. It's just a line that's stamped in there. And I'm going to line that up with the line that we have right here on our chuck. The reason for that is, after I get it up here, the reason for that is, is we want to be able to put the pin, the same, num the same pin in the same hole every time on our machine. If you notice, I've lifted it up on there. It's on the machine but it's truly not tight. I could just slide it right back off. So what we want to do is we're going to take our chuck wrench that's also the same chuck wrench that fits to open and close our jaws. It will also fit in these little cams and we're going to rotate our cams clockwise. Now what we're going to look for on our cams, they also have a line on them. The line must fall between those two V's. So the line I was talking about that we've lined up, if you notice, is right here. There's a line here. The cams that we're tightening are these. If you notice, there's two little V's right here. And I know it's very difficult to see, but there's also a line up here by my finger, or top of my fingernail. What we're doing is we're going to rotate. We're going to put our wrench. I'm going to do the top one. I'm going to push in a little bit. See the gap here? I'm going to push this in a little bit. And I'm going to rotate very lightly. You can see I didn't use a lot of pressure. 
very lightly in a clockwise motion, I am going to gradually work around every single cam to tighten our chuck down. You can see I'm not using a lot of pressure yet. All I'm trying to do is get everything snug up against the spindle of the machine. Once I've done that, I've gone all the way around. If you notice, my line is between my V's. I've snugged them up all the way around the chuck. Now I'm going to go back through and use a lot of pressure to clockwise tighten every single one of them. That will assure us this chuck is held properly on this machine. A warning is if you do not tighten these in a clockwise motion, and you, they will, and I'm going to loosen this one up so you can see it, they will also tighten up in a counterclockwise motion. If we do that, this chuck will fall off on the machine. It will not do it immediately, but uh, over time, it will fall off the machine, which means that's not going to be good because you could get hurt and damage the machine itself. There's our line. I've gone all the way around it. This chuck here is properly attached to the um, engine lathe. It is a D style, cam lock style attachment method to this machine. At that point we can move our block of wood and it's properly attached. Next machine is still an engine lathe. We're still going to attach a work holding device, our three jaw, four jaw chuck. The three jaw as well as the four jaw is going to attach on a particular machine or style of machine or brand of machine exactly the same. It has a long nose spindle taper. Again, we want to wipe off our spindle nose. There is a threaded collar that just rotates. It has a thread in here. Again, we want to use our block of wood to rest our chuck on. This chuck here is smaller, but it's still heavy. If you notice, we have the thread out here. We've got our taper we discussed previously. We want to wipe all this out. Now, one thing we want to look at, it has a slot in here. It's called the keyway. And there's a keyway on the machine also. Rotate around a little bit right here. We have to align the slot in here up with this key. So if you have a heavy chuck, I usually will bring my key to the very top as well as a slot in my chuck. And it gives me a reference so when I lift this chuck up, if it's really heavy, you're not having to fumble around with it to try to line those up. So I'm going to go ahead and I am going to attach. I'm lining the key up with the key up here. I'm going to slide it up on here. Now it's not tied again, but it will rest up there. The big difference with this is it doesn't utilize the cam locks that the prior lathe did. It has a threaded collar on here, and you have to kind of start the thread, get it started. I usually raise it up a little bit on the end, and you should theoretically be able to spin this collar by hand. What we'll do is we snug it up by hand as much as we can, but it's still not totally tight. There is a special wrench that's used on this machine. It's called a spanner wrench. They come in a variety of sizes and styles, but there's notches on our threaded collar, and we're going to hook our wrench on our threaded collar, and we're going to totally tighten it up. Now, I will say this, this chuck rotates really easy, so it's going to be very difficult to put this wrench here and tighten it with it spinning so free. So what I'm going to have to do on this particular machine, this LeBlanc, is I'm going to have to put it in a low speed, which is almost like a brake which will hold our chuck for us. So I'm going to do that very quickly. It will allow me to hook my spanner wrench, this hook, in one of our slots. And what I do, if you notice, is it's tightening the collar. We still have a little bit of movement on the chuck, but there's a lot of resistance so we can actually get it nice and tight. Now what I like doing is I usually have the handle almost horizontal this way, and just give it kind of a quick jerk. What we don't want to do is we don't want to have a big gap here and hammer this down to tighten it because it will eventually damage our spanner wrench as well as the slots on the machine. 